What does it take to start and grow an engineering business? Well, it takes a lot because number one, engineering is difficult. Right? There's a lot of complex aspects to engineering. You need to understand the technical background for you to be able to become an expert and grow a company. But secondly, business is hard, right? From the entrepreneurial side, you need to understand how to grow a business, how to hire people, how to invoice, how to collect on invoices, profits, margins, the economy, and so much more. So it is difficult. However, I am thrilled that in this week's engineering management lessons video, I have with me Richard Negri. Richard is the owner, founder, and principal engineer of GeoTerra Engineering and Construction Consultants in Baltimore, Maryland. He's also a licensed professional engineer. And in this video, he's going to share some lessons that he's learned through starting and growing his company. Let's jump right in. Definitely the, the biggest thing is, you know, where you're currently working or, you know, where you currently are as your career, um, treat them as essentially like your first client. Um, you know, you want to, where, wherever you currently are, you want to treat them as, like I said, you want to treat them as if they're your first client. Um, so do the best that you can do. Make sure you're putting your best foot forward um, and um, essentially make sure that you're, you're delivering. Um, so when you kind of treat your, your, where you currently are, as your first as your first client, you know, then you're going to carry that into the business as well. The other part is kind of get used to, you know, working the typical 6 to 12 p.m. hours, you know, so you've got your regular 9 to 5, you know, but then, you know, from 6 p.m. to 12 p.m., you know, those are when you're burning the midnight oil oil on, you know, building your own your own thing. You know, the biggest thing is you know, figuring out exactly where it is that you want to position yourself. You know, a lot of engineers, they might start out their career um, in a discipline that they might, they may or may not actually um, enjoy. So the biggest thing is definitely getting to that area where you want to apply your expertise, you know, figuring out what your particular niche is, figure out where you're going to particularly fit in. That's going to be extremely important. Figuring out um, if there's even a, a need um, for that particular niche, you know, is it is it something that can be marketable? Is it something that can be scalable? Um, you know, figure out what's you know what's required and what what areas that you're willing to serve. You know, are you going to stay in the local community that you live in, or are you willing to relocate? You know, to provide the service that you know where you feel that you particularly fit in. Um, figuring out e essentially, you know, how much you're actually going to need to start up. You know, the startup costs. Um, you know, a lot of folks think that you can kind of just you know, start with maybe just a few hundred bucks. And in some cases, that's true. But depending on what it is that you might actually want to provide in terms of a, as a service, equipment might be required, software might be required. So budgeting for all that um, prior to getting started is, ex is extremely important. Um, and the, the last thing I would leave you guys with is definitely develop a business plan, you know, similar to like how you're working with your clients, you know, treat it as a project. You know, building a business essentially is a project. You know, having a plan and then being able to execute that plan is 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 going to be key. So if you don't know where it is that you're looking to go, how are you going to get there? So treating treating building your business as you know, putting together a business plan that is essentially your roadmap to your success. You know, I mean, they say that most businesses fail within you know the first you know two to five years of business. You know, so it's extremely important that you plan out for at least those first five years you know, how you plan on getting started, how you plan to scale, how you're planning on maintaining and, you know, what, what are the metrics that you're looking to, to meet within those first five years. Um, so those, those are the, those are the best tips that I feel um, for most engineers aspiring to become entrepreneurs to kind of consider. So just a quick summary, just, you know, consider your, your current employer as your first client, um, figuring out exactly what it is, what services you particularly want to provide as an engineer, what area, you want to provide those services and whether you're willing to relocate for uh, to provide those services and then developing that business plan um, for at least five years out, you know, cause you want to guarantee your success. Yeah. Those are awesome tips. And, and, and that first one I think is really important with your treating your existing employer, like your first client, so to speak, because I do think that people don't often think about that. And I think that does get you into the entrepreneurial customer centric mindset before you even step out and start your own business. And I know for me, my, the consulting firm that I worked for became 
my first client when I went into coaching and training. I had a good relationship with them. I was doing coaching and training within the company. And then when I left, I kind of just kept the the conversation open with them. And, you know, we left on really good terms and I ended up, uh, I still do work with them today. So I think that's a really important point that a lot of people don't consider. They kind of think like, hey, I want to get out of here and do my own thing. But really, you need to put yourself in that mindset. And I guess one follow-up question I would have for you on that last point about the business plan, which I think is really valuable. So that business plan, Rich, I would imagine then has like certain goals and metrics for you that you can kind of try to hit or milestones that can kind of drive you in the growth of your business. Is that is that right? Yep, absolutely. Definitely. You know, when you think about building a business, especially thinking about five years out, I mean, it's, it's a it's a huge goal. You know, and they, you know, it's one of the things that they say is, you know, how do you eat a whale? You know, and it's, and it's one <laughs> bite at a time. You know, so that's how you kind of want to break out, break down your business plan into, you know, what are some of the key steps along the way that you want to be able to hit? And depending on, you know, how you are as an individual, you know, um, you can break that down to as, as many bite sized pieces as you want or, you know, based off of what you feel you can handle. You know, for some folks, it might be as, OK, you know, uh, I want to start I want to have my LLC formed within the next 90 days. You know, I want to have business insurance within, you know, 30 days after, you know, forming the LLC, you know, I want to have, you know, I want to procure my first client within, you know, the next 30 days after obtaining my business insurance. So you can break it down as small as that, you know, then you can add in uh, monetary metrics at that point where within my first year in business, I want to be able to have revenues of at least a hundred thousand you know, within my first year, you know, and then by year three, I want to, I want to increase that by at least 25%, Um, you know, having those different metrics, but then with those specific metrics, what are you going to do to achieve those things? Are you going to um, increase marketing? Well, how are you going to increase marketing? Are you going to employ social media? Are you going to use uh, printed publications, Um, business cards, a website? Um, Are you going to attend networking events or um, workshops? Wow, pretty comprehensive. Yeah, it's very comprehensive. You know, so it's all the different things that you want to think about um, in terms of when you're putting your business plan together. Uh, the other thing is also who's your ideal customer, um, because mm-hmm. you know that's gonna that's really gonna drive you know your marketing strategy and how you get in contact to them. Because once you know who your ideal customer is, you're gonna know the best way to to market to them. Um, you know, and then kind of staying in um, in touch with you know what the industry that particular industry that you're serving. You know, what are they looking for? You know, what's popular? What's what's in the demand, what's in the know for right now, and, you know, staying on the pulse of those things, so that way you, you remain relevant. And at the same time, and then, you know, being personable, you know, uh, that, that definitely goes a long way as well, because uh, as we mentioned um, before, it's one of those things is, you know, if you, if not only if you deliver on projects, but if you're also easy to work with, you know, good to work with, you know, people enjoy working with you, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to pretty much, not necessarily guarantee, but there's a high likelihood that they're, they're going to be willing to come back to work with you. That's awesome. Sure. All great stuff there. And I do love the idea of the business plan and that it allows you to look at the short term and what do I have to do over the next couple months to, you know, keep the lights on, keep going, keep going the business. Right. But at the same time, it allows you to look at three to five years down the road as well and understand that if I want to be here in five years, I need to do this today or this in the next like right. 60 to 90 days. So that's awesome. Well, listen, yeah. Rich, thanks so much for giving us some tips here. I know a lot of our listeners do want to become their own business owners, and I think your experience is certainly going to help them. So thanks again. Absolutely. My pleasure, Anthony. I hope you enjoyed those lessons that Rich shared. As an entrepreneur myself, I feel like those lessons are gold. And if you want to grow an engineering company, you can please take his advice and implement it. And I believe you will be successful. And please consider subscribing to our channel here. We put out videos like this on a weekly basis to help engineering professionals become better managers and leaders. I'll see you next week.